mob. Please say hello, ladies and gentlemen, to Dean Stockwell. Welcome to the uh, program. Oh, my pleasure to be here. Now, is, can this be absolutely correct? 45 years you've been making films? Doesn't seem like it. No, but it's it is. a long time. It what is. was the first now, film you made? That's half of the life of the movie industry. Is that right? I found out reading an article about Lillian Gish, and she'd been around a long time, said the industry is 90 years old. It's quite half an accomplishment. Life. Yeah, it is. How old were you when you made your first film? I was seven. Is that right? Yes. What was the movie? It was Anchors Away. And with you, uh, Gene yeah. Kelly, Frank Sinatra, Catherine oh, Grayson, yeah. Yeah. 100 Pianos in the Hollywood Bowl, and Jose Turby. My goodness. So this is, this is like big time for a seven-year-old kid. Big time for anybody, wasn't it? It was scary. Yeah. Um, I have to ask you about the scene in Blue Velvet. Oh, you got it. This was, this was without a doubt, now I'm no movie expert, but without a doubt one of the strangest things I'd ever seen on film under any circumstances. What exactly were you, what was the character, what were you doing, and, and, uh... I don't know what I was doing. I was going along just out of my imagination. I knew that there was a character in there that Dennis Hopper played, remember Frank. Right, we remember Frank, yeah, who, was, remember who Frank. was breathing out of a tank most That's of the time. Right. <laughs> and he, he was... Frank needed professional help. Is it safe to say that? That's what was in the thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He was obviously one of the blackest, irredeemable characters yeah. in yeah. recent history of movies. Yeah. And yet, in the middle of the film, he meets this guy that he looks up to and thinks is suave. <laughs> so, you know, I'm You were Frank's him. mentor. That's right. Oh, my God. So I had to be pretty weird, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. And I put the pill in his mouth. So I just thought of the, the, the most bizarre character I could come up with. And if it wasn't bizarre enough. I'm but what, what was the little, what was the, and I, I guess for people who have not seen the film, this is meaningless, but perhaps they'll rent it now and hunt up the scene. But what was that little thing, that little clubhouse you ran there? What exactly was that? You know, nobody knows. <laughs> it, it, that was Ben's place, and, and don't go there. Yeah, and, and I'll get off this in a second, but this scene really kind of made a dent on you really my... You liked this movie, David. I did. You? I enjoyed the film, but I was really taken by this one scene, and uh, if, uh, unless I'm mistaken, you were kind of singing into a trouble light. Yes. It was... Uh, Dennis came up with that. Uh -huh. He found it over on the side. No one knows where that came from. Well, it was but, very peculiar, and congratulations peculiar. on a fine piece of work. For being peculiar. <laughs> yeah, Thank no. you. Uh, you yourself were talking about the campaign with uh, John Chancellor. You, I understand you were campaigning for... Uh, Obviously, uh, the Democrats, right? You guessed yes. Now, what is that like? Is... All right. Well, it's, uh, it's really interesting to me. Uh, and what do you do? What I do, I called up the, the campaign. People said, I'll make myself available because mm -hmm. I want to try and help. I don't want to give up. I want to win this election. And they send me to these various places where the people that are really doing the grass work, the uh, root work, mm -hmm knocking on the doors and calling on the telephone and I go to cheer them up and when I first start I think it's like an acting exercise I have to go and make speeches because I, I don't normally sure. do that then I find out that they're all up there anyway yeah. and uh, I feel like Mussolini you know I say we're gonna win everyone goes Rah! like that were they happy to have your help they were very happy they didn't yes. say don't bring Frank or anything no, like that some <laughs> Uh, it, it was, is this your... I hope they were happy to have Is it. this your first experience with the Major League Politics? This is the first one, yes. Uh -huh. and, and do you think that you will participate again? Yes, I will, because yeah. my main concern uh, at the inspiration of... Now I have two, I have a three-year-old and five-year-old babies. And my dear wife, Joy, who's my inspiration, we're concerned about the environment. That's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm doing this. Yeah. And I think Dukakis is the one that will help us with the environment. I don't think the B word will. Uh, um... You also had a lot of, well, not you also, but you had, there was a period in your time, in your life when you stopped making films and then just went to work. You, you went, times. Yeah. What, what, kind of, what kind of jobs did you do when you were not making films? Well, the first time was when I was 16. I'd been making films uh, for seven. nine years. Yeah, that's yeah. a career for a lot of folks. That's right. And yeah. it's, it was work. It was six days a week and, and one after another was a lot of work. And uh, I had to get away from that and find out what anonymity was like. So I, I took what I could get. I yeah, because at that point you knew no other I life, really. One, one of your dogs did today. I worked in a bowling alley. Yeah. 
and uh, I was a prune inspector. I worked on the railroad. I, I, I drove the spikes in the railroad and on the signal gang. I worked on offices, all sorts of well, stuff. Was there a job that uh, you had in those days that you said to yourself, yeah, I could, I could do this the rest of my the life? The prune inspector. Really? I thought that was pretty neat, yeah. yeah. It was free prunes. Yeah. Yeah. And how long uh, was, was that first period in your life? That went for five years. Yeah. Then, you know, what happened? I realized I, there was nothing else I could do. Uh, I had no training for anything else. I had to go back and try and do it on my terms. Yeah. And, so I, and I got lucky. I went back and, and had some success. Yeah, same with me, except I just got a talk show. <laughs> when I realized I couldn't do anything else, I sent a letter to NBC, and they said, well, come by and we'll take a look at you. Um, do you know, when you do a, a, a job on a film, uh, are you the character like 24 hours a day? Like, I guess Sean Penn is like that. If he's playing a role, he becomes the character. For like the next six months, you, you've got Billy, the, the convict, on your hands, you know? Yeah. Do, do you act that way? No, I don't normally. I did once. Uh, I did in, in a recent film that's been out, Married to the Mob. Right. I right. did. Because I loved it so much. It, it was a comedy. Yeah. And it's the first time I've gotten to do a comedy in a long time. And the guy was colorful and sexy as a, a mafia. So boy. you just became him? I became him for 24 hours, drove my wife nuts, and everyone said, you know, What's going on with you, Dean? I said, I'm just having a good time. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're lucky you weren't hospitalized, you yeah, know, yeah, for yeah. behaving that way all the time. I'm a lucky guy all the time. I'm lucky to get shot. <laughs> what are we doing here, huh? Commercial? Well, commercial? Yeah, we're done. Okay, where are we? Are we done here? Yeah, oh, my God. Well, stay right there. We'll, we'll be right back, folks. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my thanks to uh, Dean Stockwell and also uh, John Chancellor and everybody who helped us out tonight with Stupid Petrix. Tomorrow on the program, Dennis Miller and uh, Kenny Loggins, and also, I think, footage of Lloyd Benson eating lunch. It's uh, part of the Fairness Doctrine. We'll see you then. Good night, everybody.